four years old. It's crazy. Mm. Don't ever call Perch mushy again. Got one. Oh yeah. There you go. You ready? All right. All ready. Yeah, unfortunately, some of these these perch they shrink when you uh, smoke them. <laughs> yeah, they were monsters. They were monster 15 inches when we put them in there. You guys are in for a treat today. <laughs> That's it. You guys are just in for a treat. Something cool is happening right now. Something very cool. Good yeah, good morning. Good morning, the cook to cook family. Somebody uh, made us breakfast. I know, it looks great. Yeah, Dad. Made us breakfast, Dad. This is Leroy and Monica. Hey, hey, hey. Everybody's in for a treat yes. today. It's gonna be a good day. Adrian made it down. We're gonna hook up on some fish. Yeah. Let's do it. All right, so the itinerary today is we're going to have a quick breakfast, hit the surf, and Leroy is gonna share with us his smoked perch recipe. Also, look who's calling. <laughs> That's Chris Fish Dish. He's actually at the surf right now. Chris. Yo. Yo. What's up, everybody? Yeah, you're on the spot, dude. All right, well, we'll see you in a bit. All right, we'll see you guys on the surf. We just hit the hey. beach. What's up? Chris Fish Dish. Yeah. You made it, dude. Made it, man. He's fresh from the More Than Fishing tournament and gosh dude this is a marathon of a weekend for him and it's monday it's monday hell yeah we're out here on a monday so looking for my first perch dude so we're gonna go knock that out today yeah if anything and uh plus that plus we'll make a couple rolls later to, you know you guys are in for a treat again that's like the theme of this whole video you guys are all in for a treat uh chris just met leroy two sushi chefs on the channel right now insane so you might you may or may not see some surf perch rolls you may or may not see uh, some smoked perch, too, <laughs> just a lot of other stuff. And uh, there might be lobster later, but we'll see. We'll see. We're going to cook whatever we catch, man. Yeah, you dude. Know. If you guys are new to Chris Fish Dish, have never seen him or seen any of his videos, uh, it is linked below. Amazing stuff. Don't watch it while you're hungry because it'll, it'll mess you up. <laughs> Sushi chef for how long? Uh, about seven years or so. so. Um, I'm not doing it right now, but I do always want to go back into it, so, you know. Yeah, dude. Versus the fishing, man. You gotta catch the fish first, and we'll go, uh, then we'll go pick it up. Yeah. He's gonna get, he's gonna get on uh, some perch right now, and you'll see what we whip up, or what he whips up, because all that's gonna be on his channel. All you're gonna see on this channel is the finished product and maybe how it tastes. <laughs> so, stay tuned. All right, we're gonna throw some crappie sliders on. We just need to get the skunk off. That's it. All right, going with the crappie sliders. Oh, those are the bigger ones. Wow. Striper, dude. Striper, it says striper right there. <laughs> <laughs> you should tie that on. I always end up just throwing these and then catching a few small ones and I'm like, all right, I'm going back to the lure. Oh no. So I just caught one and yeah, he was kind of small. We'll see if we can catch another one because we definitely have uh, some perch rolls that we want to make. I think I got a little tiny guy right now. At least the skunk is off. This is actually fish number two. The first one was not caught on camera. It's one of those times where you think you're recording, but you're not. First little guy. I'm starting to think we should take a gamble and uh, move down a spot or so, but barely knew this guy was on. Woo! All right, brother. Thank you so much. All right, we're back. And uh, we're calling an audible. We were at that beach for probably an hour and a half and the only person who was really slaying it was Monica. She's got like, she has like 13 fish under her belt right now. 12, 12. It was a baker's dozen. And she uh, threw out the idea, kind of hinted to it, and then of course I, uh, I encouraged it. But we're gonna, we're gonna fish on base. <laughs> this never happens, guys. This is like, oh. once that option opened up, um, it was a no-brainer. So, and, and the biggest thing is we want to get Chris fish dish on his first 
surf perch. That's like major goal number one. And uh, guys, we'll see you there. It's just, we'll, no guarantees of course, but if they're gonna be, if there's gonna be fish caught, that's where it's gonna happen. All right guys, we made it. This is a uh, spot numero dos. Again, the goal is to see Chris Fish Dish's first ever barred surf perch because we get to see him prepare it in a magnificent way that only he can. It's gonna be beautiful. So again, this beach is only accessible if you know somebody who is allowed on base. So it's not open to the public. That's why when Monica said that we can go, it was a no brainer. This is like, let's go. It's gonna be a little challenging because of the wind, but it'll be worth it. This is looking good. Got one. Oh yeah. It's still there. It should still be there. Finally, I think I found a good hole for him. Okay. Okay. And I'm only using six pound test, but I'm using the crusties. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's a good one. That's a keeper. Oh, he swallowed it too. There you go. Z Man crusties, first fish. So if you don't have a cooler or anything to bring it with you, you can just bury your fish. Sand usually stays pretty cool, especially when you're kind of near the tidal zone. So we'll, we'll bury them for now and we'll keep fishing. Awesome. Oh, I just missed another one. No, he's still on. I got another one. Decent fish right here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah on the crusties. Bob's secret bait, baby. Fish number two, got him right on the bottom lip. They're trying to wave to Chris that we got him. All right, we got fish number two on the crusty. We'll bury him right next to his buddy. So fish number two on the crusty. He hit pretty close. I think I'm gonna catch one more and I'm gonna head back down to let them know that we're catching them over here. All right, so Chris just got his first ever barred surf perch. <laughs> and it's windy. It's super windy out here, but I finally hooked up with my first perch, guys. Yeah. And now we gotta look for the striper. Yes. Fish number three on the crusties. All right, we're getting them. Chris is making sure that his catch is very well prepared before uh, bringing it home. He one with the sand crab and he ate one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was because Monica touched his head. Oh, you got one? Heck yeah. <laughs> That's right. Oh, he got it on the crusties. There you go. Do you super glue your crusty on? Huh? Do you super glue your crusty on? Oh, I just missed one. Oh, I got one. On the crappie slider, on the heavy bass rig. But I have to remember it's six, it's six pound test leader, so still can't horse them in too crazy. Shoo! Another one. Dude. The crappie slider is unbeatable. Oh yeah. Another one on a crappie slider. It's like fish number five. It's all about, I've been on a good little streak of small perch. Speaking of that, I just, I just got another one. The crappie slider is definitely putting in work. This is like probably fish number six or seven. 
and uh, Chris has some to cook up. Chris, how big is your hook? Uh, small one. So I'm gonna get Chris on some crappie sliders, but let me let this guy go back really quick. Oh, sorry guy, he'll make it. All right, hooking up Chris with some of these crappie sliders. Dude, these are, these, they light these up. Chris got another one. All right, Chris has almost enough to make some sushi. Yep, another one. Another little guy. He gets to go back home. But again, the main goal of this day was to see if we can get Chris on his first ever Bard Surf Perch. And we definitely succeeded. And then now we're pretty much gonna fish for another 15 minutes and then pretty much go home. I think we've, we've accomplished what we wanted to. So we'll see you at the house. And we're back. Our faces got sandpapered. How was it? What'd you guys think? The wind started blowing. Uh, my line got tangled and you guys caught all the fish. But I heard hooping and hollering down the beach, which made us really happy. So it Oh was, no, this is mine. It was a good day. Yeah, it's mine. Um, but he didn't catch any fish and I didn't catch any fish. And as hostesses, I guess that's the way we should, it should be. You guys yeah. should always catch more fish. Time to show you guys a really cool recipe that uh, Leroy yeah. has prepared. So let's get inside and cook. Some rice vinegar, a bit of cane sugar, make it sweet. That's about it. And so a little bit of water and lemon juice. It's called cucumber sunomono. Sunomono is, uh, the Japanese like a cucumber salad, kind of sweet and sour. Oh, yeah. So it'll nice. have it'll have cucumber, you know, hot house cucumber sliced, and then it'll have uh, Japanese seaweed we call wakame. So we have to rehydrate it. So it's dried kelp is what it is. So Monica, you're you're rehydrating re rehydrating wakame, which wakame. is a, a dried variety of seaweed. Um, when we when we first use it. It's really hard and brittle. It's just completely dried out. Um, they use it in soups. Uh, we're gonna use it in sunamono, oh, okay. which is one part vinegar, one part sugar, one part water is the base for it. And then you can put anything that you want, but it's typically, um, I think like harasame noodles, uh, cucumbers. Um, we're gonna do sliced lemon um, and then the seaweed. So it's just a light, kind of a refreshing salad because with a heavy smoked fish yeah and and you know that kind of it's a palate cleanser and then it's also a little bit light because when I make you guys the other thing it, it's a bit heavy so it's good with the rice so you have that balance you know between nothing fancy just stop just stuff nothing fancy but that's really good in, in um, miso soup too so this is you'll be able to see it in a little while from start to finish so it goes from just the dried so in a matter of moments it rehydrates but we'll let it soak a little bit and it imparts a, a lot of flavor really good flavor into the salad so when you go to the sushi bar you'll say I can make your sushi for you if you want but I left some in the okay house so we cleared off a counter for Chris to do his magic as well again his full video will be linked below right when it's done and <laughs> Based on his previous videos, it will not disappoint. It's gonna be a good one. What what should people expect? What do you have cooking in this in this marvelous brain of yours? <laughs> uh, with the first perch that we cut. So with far? this, well, my first perch. Uh, you know what? Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and clean these guys up first, real quick. Um, sit them on the ice, pull out the meat real quick. Also. Uh, we're gonna cover it in salt, killing kind of bacteria on the surface. We're gonna scrape them up and get some spicy surf perch, spicy tuna style. What? And we're gonna go ahead and deep fry the skin, roll that up with some cucumber avocados. I got some sauces on top of there. We're gonna throw some serrano peppers also on top of it. Shut your mouth. All right, guys, you're gonna see the finished product in this video, but and, and, and us eating it, of course. So, so don't watch the rest of this video if you're really hungry. It's like going to the supermarket. Don't go shopping for food when you're hungry. But again, his video will be linked below. You heard it come out of his mouth. It's gonna be spectacular. I'll catch you guys in a bit. Mm. 
All right, we're gonna have a little sample of this. Hmm. You guys used to have a restaurant. Yes. <laughs> it's obvious. It's obvious. All right, we got everything ready for Chris Fish Dish to cook. So what you guys are seeing on this vlog is basically all the behind the scenes of what it takes to film one of his videos. And uh, yeah, no, it's coming along rather well. We caught some fish. We got the nice countertop ready for him to do his magic and we're all excited to eat it. So, so stoked. So dad, are you excited for this? Oh yeah, I am. <laughs> and why not see it? There's the burner down there. We gotta put some wood chips in. I use apple wood because fruit wood, when, you, when you're smoking fish, you wanna use a fruit wood. Like if you use a hickory or something like that, it's just too strong. Fruit wood is a little bit milder. So that's why we use whenever, most people use alder, but I got apple chips today. You can soak your chips in water to make them smolder a little bit. I don't, I just throw them in there. They smolder good enough. Got to play it on. I need to fill this full of water. You can always, you can spray your grates too with a non-stick if you don't want it to, but uh, to stick after the cooking process. But, you know, I don't, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't, and the oil from the fish normally releases it anyways. Yeah, so. especially since you're doing it over the course of how long? Right, um, hour and a half. Hour and a half. That's it. Smoke. Hour and a half. You know, some people like their fish a little drier. Some people like it a little moist. So it's depending on what you like personally. Okay. You know, if you like a really, really moist fish, like it was deep fried and, you know, it's kind of juicy, then you, yeah, of course, you smoke it less. But the fish that I smoked out there, you tried them. They're kind of, they're not dried all the way. They're still kind of moist, but they're firm. Those were smoked an hour and a half at 250 degrees. So. So we can crank this on and get it going, okay. get it up to temperature, and then we will start. You're gonna have to try to keep it out of the wind as much as possible. But I, I leave it about right there, a little bit above medium. And I have a temperature gauge right here in the front. Okay. And up on top are some vents. That's important too, to, to control your temperature of the smoke, the heat on the inside to cook your fish. So if you close it, of course you're gonna get That's less good. less heat, you know. Yes, but, if, you. but I have them set right where I want them. So at that, at that, you know, spot on my burner, it'll get up to about 250 degrees. Because we got a little wind today, you might have to kick it up a little bit, but the key is to get 250 degrees. All right, 250, that's what we're shooting for. Smoke is going. Yeah, it'll smoke like crazy for about, you know, it'll start smoking once it gets up to that smoking temperature then we'll throw our fillets on yep and pretty okay. much uh let's let's go over that let's go over that yeah sure so um leroy is actually going to go over uh the recipe for what he smokes the fish with so here we got some perch fillets i scaled them of course right so you can see the skin that's a perch fillet right and then uh, i left the center bones in you can take those out if you want the pin bones i leave them in because there's not too many you can eat around them okay and then i i use a dry rub i don't brine my fish which brining is more like a liquid like salt water and all kinds of spices i just do a dry rub and here it is right here it's uh two parts of brown sugar i use cups so we can say for the for the purposes of of showing you this two cups of brown sugar one cup of either kosher salt i, I have uh, himalayan pink salt in there sea salt so that's good i put a tablespoon of black pepper which is table grind black pepper stuff you get you know put in your shaker at home i put uh, uh, a tablespoon of garlic powder and a tablespoon of onion powder and i mix it all up and as long as you keep it dry it's good for two months okay so you can make a lot this this lasted me two two times almost okay and then depending on how sweet you want it because it's brown sugar i only put probably a tablespoon on each filet and then i and i massage it in just to the meat side only and then marinate it for at least four hours this has been marinating for like about seven hours which is fine but all the liquid you see that has come out here is actually from the fish okay so what you did is basically dry the fish was totally dry these fillets right. were totally dry he rubbed this all over the front side not the skin side at all and then all the juice that you're seeing in here now is all from the 
fish itself. Yeah, because the salt in the in the in the rub draws the moisture out. Okay, so that actually firms the meat up a little bit too. So when you smoke it, it's not as mushy. Mm. Okay. So and then by the way, check that out. Hook to Cook Senior, right here. <laughs> He's right. feeling hundred percent. He's gonna be out fishing here really, really soon. So for all those who are who were concerned about his surgery and all that stuff, it went well. You feeling good, Dad? I feel good. All right, so thank you guys for all your thoughts and <laughs> prayers. He's uh, he's feeling healthy. He's ready to put some sand crab and some mackerel on some bait lines and put us all to shame. Now, back to okay. smoking this. Oh yeah, you can smell the smoke. It's at 200 degrees right now. I could put the fish in at any time because, you know, smoking is not a not an exact science. It really depends on the size of the fish. You know, I don't like to overload the racks. I try to like tend to put, you know, four fish on each rack, give them a little bit of, so the smoke can pass all over the fish and the filet. Sure. Then you can tell the, the wood's starting to ignite and smoke up. This whole thing will be a smoke stack here pretty soon. So we'll just close it and we'll just let it go and just keep an eye on the temperature because the temperature is the most important part. You know, if it goes over 250, you're gonna overcook it. If it, if it doesn't, if it stays under 250, it's not gonna be the hour and a half, it's gonna be longer. Because uh, temperature is everything in cooking. So we'll just keep an eye on it. And when it gets to maximum temperature, and if it needs to go up or down, we'll, we'll adjust the flame. And then, you know, the, the wood will be gone. It'll only smoke for about half an hour, but the flavor is already in the fish. And then the rest of it is just cooking. It's like not really steaming, but it's slow cooking with a little bit of moisture to keep that thing dry and to keep it moist. And that's that's all there is to it. it comes yeah, out really good. I want to see it. And it really depends on. Because like I was I thinking of getting one of this too. Yeah, these are actually. I think this one my buddy bought it for like 120 bucks, and then he gave it to me because he got an electric one. I don't really like electric. Yeah. Because electric pulses, you know, it, it it's not a constant. Uh -huh. like gas gas is constant heat right and electricity pulses so it's on then it's off then it's on it's on yeah then it's on it's on yeah. like that so yeah I, i'd rather have gas kicking any any chef mm -hmm. they want gas they don't want yeah. electric so this is all behind the scenes look, hey, uh, look what chris is working on i was gonna cook all this on the beach, but the wind got to us. So. We at home now. <laughs> Inside Edward's house, we're gonna go ahead and cook today. Prepping up some stuff right now, and then uh, we get the cooking. Yeah, fire dough, dude. We're gonna grill some fish out there, dude. Yeah, this holds up perch perfectly. Good size, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna make a lemon pepper perch musubis. That would've been freaking good. You can uh, still make those. <laughs> <laughs> I miss cooking behind the sushi bar, so you're gonna you guys see my POV uh, from behind the bar. So what are you working on, lovely um, lady? This is like cream cheese, uh, crusty garlic loaf bread, sliced tomato. I was supposed to have balsamic to drizzle over the top, but I forgot. Okay. And smoked fish on top of that. So it's a snack. It doesn't necessarily go with the rest of our a bit of an Asian theme, but this is all cultures blending together into a bunch of snacks that go really well with IPA, hook to cook family members, and hopefully you like it. So we're gonna try it in just a little bit. What did I miss out on? You missed out on a lot, but. I heard. You have an appetite, right? Yeah, I didn't, I like, my lunch was the leftovers from yesterday, which are still really good, and then they kept asking if I wanted a three o'clock snack, and I said no, because I have plans. This is serious business. Serious. Serious Food. business. Food business. Hold on. Cucumber me. <laughs> it's rustic bread, sorry. Mm. Mm. It's a good day. Edible. Don't ever call perch mushy again. Mm -mm. Perch is amazing. I have a little tear. Can you guys see a little tear? This is like all so beautiful. And delicious. So good. Chef's This is so good. Adrian's behind the camera. It's been a long time. But, uh, that's actually right. Let's go check out that smoker. Let's watch a growing flower. 
there. So this is about 40 minutes in or what? Uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think we started about six. These will be done soon. Really oh, soon. yeah. <laughs> This is so crazy. We have like top chefs in the kitchen right now. And guys, this is just amazing. So thank you all for being a part of it. This is great. First time in the backyard. <laughs> yeah, dude, you see it. I know. I'm cooking in Hick Cook's backyard, bro. Stop. Beer Cook's fish dish. You can yeah. be anywhere you want. <laughs> but he's here. He's here. So what you got right there? Caught earlier, bro. We're just gonna go ahead and scale these guys out first, and then uh, after that, we're gonna cook it. Don't have a scaler, but we're gonna do old school style and just use a knife, bro. Actually, oh. Oh. there we go. Oh, a homemade scaler. You wanna be gentle. You don't be too rough because you're gonna damage the meat. You gotta treat everything with love. Amen, brother. Uh, I've been cooking brag. since I was a little kid. I'm the oldest of my siblings. And I was always had to uh, cook dinner before my mom got home. So uh, I took care of them that way. Uh, later on, I worked in a sushi restaurant for seven years. And that was actually my second job uh, when I was younger. After that, uh, well, my boss passed away, so we had to close up shop. So, I uh, started working for a post office, but my love for fish was always there. My true passion is always cooking. So, I uh, took up fishing a couple years ago, uh, just for fun, and started cooking some dishes at home, and I started watching these guys catch some fish. I was like, you know what? I'm cooking all this crazy stuff. I need to share this uh, with some people. So I uh, started doing my own thing. I made a couple little videos here and there. Uh, had to learn the ropes, how to edit, shoot. All the little things that goes into making a video. And then this guy hits me up. Hey, let's go fish. I was like, yeah, bro. Where you at? <laughs> Santa Maria. Damn! <laughs> Alright bro, I'll go meet you bro. Let's go. And here we are now. Adrian's being scientific with it, wants to see what they've been eating. That's the hatch. And they're eating a bunch of ash too. It's crazy. In a sense. use it. Go home. Leave your knife out. She said, yeah, you do it. Yeah. I'm going to have to make one when I get home. No. These skills, but that one's more compact. <laughs> <laughs> so before, Japanese sushi. After. Yeah. Make sure you clean yeah, brass. All, the, yeah, brass. all that gunk out. So it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just the care that this man takes with this fish is mind-blowing. It's amazingness. I think it's called dynamite. Is it dynamite? Dynamite house special. It's got shrimp, scallops, imitation crab, and lobster. And it's got a lot of veggies. It's got squashes, broccolis. Say no more. But hold on, imitation crab, but real lobster. Let that, let that sink in. But it's good. It's good. Actually, I've had people come up to me at my restaurant and say they like imitation crab better than real. Shh. Yeah. Shh. Your wife made this. Yes, she did. I can't make it like that. I tried. Amazing. Yeah. She makes a whole pan of that and takes it to work and her boss. Like half of oh my gosh! Yeah. There's scallops, lobster, mm -hmm. and lobster that they caught, which you guys will see in the video soon, or like on the channel soon. Just again, so much going on. Chris is doing his thing back there. We got some fish smoking, and we basically have family just uniting. It's amazing. You ready? All right, they're coming out. Man. They are ready. 
Yeah, unfortunately, some of these these perch they shrink when you uh, smoke them. <laughs> yeah, they were monsters. They were monster 15 inches when we put them in there. Doesn't it smell good? Don't judge me. It smells really good when it comes out. I think I got a little. It's breakfast, dude. Yeah. Breakfast. This smells like salmon right now. Mm. This is pretty much what. Yeah. That's it. If you had smell of vision. Oh. Fortunately, folks, you cannot smell a vision yet, or else you'd be straight drooling. Oh, yeah. Mm. Don't eat that part. Leroy. <laughs> I have bones on it. This is amazing. Huh? This Good. is amazing. Now, is that mushy? Mm -mm. No. Not mushy at all. This perch was caught yesterday morning. Just so you know. So it's fresh, marinated, smoked in applewood. Mmm. That is so good. An hour and a half. Well, I don't know what you guys are eating, so. <laughs> Like perch, perch skin on deck. It's like perch or on. Perch crackling. <laughs> We're making spicy. Spicy surf perch. Spicy surf spicy perch. Spicy tuna style. Look at that. Spicy tuna style. That is how you make spicy tuna. And We're going to add the, uh, the same ingredients as I would when I make spicy tuna. Uh -huh. But we don't have tuna, so we need some surf perch. Surf perch. And is that a spoon or a knife? Oh, it's just a regular spoon. A spoon is one of the best tools in the kitchen that you can use. That's crazy. For everything. I need to uh, peel a ginger and smash stuff. <laughs> smash stuff, peel a ginger, and make... Yeah. Uh, Spicy minced fish. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're basically just scraping the, uh, the meat of the fish into little shreds. Mm -hmm. It's easy to apply when you're making the sushi roll. Yeah. And you can add your favorite ingredients too. It's not really spicy. You can add really anything that you want. Oh, you keep it on the ice. Oh, because I'm just trying to keep. I want to keep the meat as cool as possible. Yeah. Mm, that is.